millions of children grew up with Mr. Rogers and his neighborhood. So now a new documentary explores his life and lessons. Jeffrey Brown has more. The trolley, the cute puppets, the cardigan sweater. Millions loved Mr. Rogers and his neighborhood. Others found it all a bit, well, too nice. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Filmmaker Morgan Neville watched as a kid and looking again as an adult, found something worth celebrating today. When I started digging into him, I just felt like this was a voice I don't hear in our culture anymore. It's a voice that needs a place at the table, and it's a voice that speaks up for a lot of things that nobody else is speaking up for. It's you I like. It's not the things you wear. It's a grown-up voice that's empathetic and that's looking out for our own cultural long-term well-being. Neville, who won an Oscar for his documentary 20 Feet from Stardom, has now made Won't You Be My Neighbor, a new, fuller look at the life and work of Fred Rogers. A television program for children made its unauspicious debut on station WQED in Pittsburgh. Its host, Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood had its national debut on public television in 1968. Original episodes and reruns would air until 2001. The show quickly hit a chord with children across the country. Mr. Rogers? Yeah. I want to tell you something. What would you like to tell you? I like you. I like you, my dear. Thank you very much for telling me that. A Presbyterian minister who studied child psychology, Rogers was on a mission, says Neville, to harness the power of television to reach and teach children, but without any high-tech lits. I've always felt that I didn't need to put on a funny hat or jump through the hoop to have a relationship with a child. For Fred Rogers, television was almost the um, necessary evil to do what he wanted to do with his mission. Children have very deep feelings, just the way everybody does. He knew that from the moment he first saw television and really changed his life's course. But at the same time, he hated television. So in a certain way, he's the least likely TV star of all time. Did you ever know any grown-ups who got married and then later they got a divorce? The program didn't shy away from addressing well, tough issues of the day. Oh, there's Officer Clemens. Hi, Officer Clemens. Come Hello, in. Mr. Rogers, how are you? Francois Clemens, who played a friendly policeman in the neighborhood, recalls a seemingly benign scene intended to send a bigger message. Around the country, they didn't want black people to come and swim in their swimming pools. My being on the program was a statement for Fred. I think Fred Rogers made this decision very early in his career that what he was going to do was to level with children. Because I think the adult instinct we have, and I as a parent know this, you want to tell your kids not to pay attention to bad things or don't worry about things. A dead fish would be one that isn't swimming or breathing or anything at all. Look down there and see, will you? And the fact what of the matter see? is children are way too smart to not worry about things. They know when bad things happen. There were spoofs and mockery, including Eddie Murphy on Saturday Night Live. Always want to live in a house like yours, my friend. Maybe when there's nobody home, I'll break in. And many wondered, is this guy for real? Someday, oh, someday, I'll not have to say. I think the question a lot of people always had was, is this an act? Is it a performance? Surely there's some other dark side to Fred Rogers? Without a doubt, the most common question I got was some version of, is this guy for real? And the conclusion I came to after, after years of working on this is he's 100% for real. And in fact, that's kind of the surprise. The reveal is that he's even more Mr. Rogers-like in real life than he is on the show. So the difference between Mr. Rogers and Fred Rogers is Fred was a more dimensional, more willful, more intellectual version of Mr. Rogers. More willful and tougher than those colorful cardigans might suggest but also hints of doubt and fears that he wasn't fulfilling his mission. It is moving to watch Fred Rogers and, and think about how television and the world were, in the end, not what he wanted them to be. How, how did you come to think about this? He was somebody that believed in the potential of television. 
and dedicated his life to it because he believed it could be a place where we could build communities. And, you know, there are times when television has done that, but more often than not, we live in an era where television is incentivized to do the opposite, to actually divide us. And I think Fred found that very painful, but it didn't mean that he stopped believing. And I think if he were here, he would still be trying to figure out ways to, mm -hmm. to use these messages positively. And, and I think it's part of why I made the film. Fred Rogers died in 2003. The film Won't You Be My Neighbor is now playing in theaters nationwide. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown.